grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you sent down your Spirit upon the bright disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You, you renew them in strength and vigor. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sent them out into the world to proclaim the good news. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jews 
and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. That's one of my favorite prayers in the church. Lord, send forth your Spirit. Inflame our hearts. Renew us. Enlighten us. Help us to be wise to enjoy the presence of God in our lives and in our world. That is what we celebrate on the Feast of Pentecost. The Lord has sent us an advocate, a guide, a helper, a sanctifier. He has sent the Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit is the one who has led and formed the church. More than that, he has sustained the church from its very beginning up until this current moment. The Holy Spirit is the one who can inspire us, who can allow us to hear God's voice, and it is something truly wonderful. So may the Holy Spirit fully and completely enter into our lives. May our hearts be set on fire with love for God and love for others. May we truly be inflamed with that burning desire to see and to experience God, not just here at Mass, but in everything we do, in every part of our life. Entrust yourself today to the Holy Spirit. Freely give yourself over to his wisdom and love. Let it lead you down the path that has been prepared for you. This is how we become holy. This is how we become saints. And this is why we are here today. So how will you let the Holy Spirit speak to you today? If there are any obstacles in your heart that keep you from following God, take a moment and hand it over to Him. Bring yourself as you are, the good and the bad, before God, and allow the Holy Spirit to melt away everything that keeps you from loving Him fully. Let your hearts be set on fire to live and move at all times in God's greatness, in His mercy, and in His peace. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. I love that line, you shall renew the face of the earth. I think it's simply marvelous. And we all know that the earth right now, after the pandemic for the last two and a half years, after the violence we see at home and abroad, we know the earth is in need of a renewal. It needs to be strengthened with new life, with new hope, and a new direction as we continue to see the world open up once more and hopefully not slide backwards any again. But we need to be renewed in the right and proper way. Renewed in God's way. Renewed in His love. Since the pandemic began, or at least a few months into it, I know I was telling people, especially uh, here, that we need another Pentecost. We need a spirit sending forth that will strengthen and enliven us. Something that will give us strength and courage, not just to go out into the world and enjoy life once again, but to go forth with God's greatness in everything we do. The Holy Spirit of God has done it before and he will do it again. And as faithful followers, we should have no doubt about this. But we should pray for it to happen. We should believe it will occur. And we should go forward strengthened and empowered by the amazing love of God. Just imagine what our world would look like if it was renewed in this way. It would be remarkable to behold.
and don't we want to be a part of that? On that very first Pentecost Sunday, the eleven apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary were gathered in the upper room, the same room where they were in where Jesus Christ instituted the Eucharist, the same room where he ordained the first priests of the church, the same room where he had granted forgiveness of sins through the sacrament of reconciliation. It was in this place that the Holy Spirit was sent down upon them in tongues of fire and giving them the seven gifts. Now, if you're counting, that's four of the seven sacraments that have taken place in this one, one area. Those moments of encountering God in a very particular and tangible way. And after all of this, the apostles left the locked doors and they went out into the world. They went to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, his mercy, his healing, and his forgiveness. They, the fact that he died out of love for us to bring us back into right relationship with God. They did not just go out into the world to enjoy life once more, as many of us have been starting to do ourselves, but they went forth, strengthened by the Holy Spirit, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And we have received those same gifts. We have received that ability to go out and share the good news same way that the apostles did. As we venture forth into the world again, as we pick up traveling, maybe not as much with gas prices, but as we go out into the world, as we return to the workplace, as we continue to enter into this way and figure out what the new normal is, they, we have to do something more. It is not just about being normal. I don't want things to return to normal. But I want things to become extraordinary. Life with God is anything but normal. Normal is boring and mundane, and life with God never is. Life with God means being enlivened, in having our hearts set on fire, and wanting the world to know it, and to share in it. That is what Pentecost is about, and that is precisely what we are here celebrating today. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, fear and reverence of the Lord, and piety. These are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that we receive through the sacrament of confirmation. And these gifts are meant to be used. There is never a time that we run out of our gift. I mean, sometimes we may think we have no more wisdom to give. But the gifts of God never are exhausted. They never expire. They never run out. Instead, the more we use these gifts, the great riches and depth we can draw from it constantly throughout our entire life. So I wasn't kidding when I said that we need another Pentecost. We need that renewal in our world today. And the remarkable thing about all of this is that we've already received those gifts to make it happen. So how are you using your gifts today? How are you allowing God to form and mold and guide you in your life? As we hopefully leave many of the challenges of COVID behind us, how are you bringing the love of God with you into the world once more? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us now confess our faith. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten. Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary. 
Let us approach our Heavenly Father as one body in Christ, strengthened by the Spirit, and ask that He hear our prayers. Please respond, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that the Holy Spirit will inspire her to proclaim the gospel of life to the world, we pray to the Lord. This is the Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful of all nations, as they share Christ's good news in all languages, we pray to the Lord. This is the Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, that they may shepherd the people entrusted to their care with compassion. And for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and the sacrament of marriage, we pray to the Lord. For those who govern and lead the people of this world, that they may nurture societies that are just, caring, compassionate, and living in peace with all who are their neighbors, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, that they will know the healing power of the risen Christ. And for all who are ill on our parish sick list, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that through the mercy of God, they may be granted everlasting life, especially Cal Stroh, mother of Mark, Elizabeth, Ed, and Greg, and Patrick Inman, father of David Inman, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, James Jacksack, Richard Kellner, and Jean Cluza, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all the special intentions of the parishioners of St. Mary's and their intentions for the faithfully departed for the month of June, we pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord Heavenly Father, you sent your spirit to strengthen and renew us. Through him we ask that you now hear our prayers that we make through your Son, Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as, prom as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us into all truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your pastoral history to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those who made your adopted children, by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that we have summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Next weekend, we will be receiving your offerings for the health care, wellness, and retirement fund for priests of the Archdiocese of Chicago. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, hallelujah.